Hi, I'm Chris Potts. This is the third of three screencasts on compositional semantic grammars. The first covered some technical preliminaries. The second reviewed the semantic lexicon that serves as the basis for the grammar presented here. You can think of that lexicon as the raw ingredients, and the rules presented here combine those ingredients into complex meanings. Our semantic grammar consists of a series of rules that tell you what to do with various local syntactic structures. Here's the most basic rule. It's called NB for non-branching. It says that if you see a non-branching node in the syntax, you should just pass up the meaning of the child to its parent. This is a kind of bookkeeping rule. You just pass up the meaning unmodified. Our second rule is more interesting. It's called S because it represents the most basic way of obtaining a sentence meaning from a proper name, a PN, combining with a verb phrase, a VP, to get the meaning of the whole structure. The semantic part of the rule says, apply the VP meaning to the PN meaning. The third rule is A for adjective. It explains how to handle adjectival modifiers of NPs. The rule is similar to S on the semantic side. We again do function application, but here it's the left child rather than the right child that acts as the functor. This is because in our lexicon, we define adjectives as functions looking for noun type meanings as their arguments. Rule N for negation. This is a bit of a hack. We just assume that the negation is tacked on to the VP. It acts as the functor on that VP. Of course, we don't actually say things like Kim not run, rather we say Kim doesn't run. As semanticists, maybe we get a little leeway in terms of ignoring the fact that do appears here in English. Next up is rule TV. It too derives VP meanings. TV stands for transitive verb. The rule says that transitive verb meanings apply to their PN object semantically. The result is a one-place predicate, just like both of the VP nodes in rule N. Finally, we have two rules for handing quantificational determiners, since they have two arguments. Rule Q1 says the determiner D takes its restriction as an argument semantically. And Rule Q2 says that the output of Q1 applies to the VP to create the overall meaning of the sentence. So we have two ways of making an S meaning. Notice that they differ in which item is the functor and which is the argument. For the rule on the left, the VP is the functor. For the rule on the right, it's the QP. We also have two ways of creating VPs, and they are potentially interconnected. For instance, I can use rule TV to create a VP node, and then rule N can negate it. And of course, rule N is also happy to take simple intransitive VPs like run as its lower VP, VP sub I. In other words, a transitive verb with its object argument in is just like an intransitive verb semantically. Let's now walk through two derivations aimed at showing how the grammar rules work together. We start with this simple sentence, Bart skateboards. We'll use the grammar to interpret it compositionally. Every node will have an independent meaning, and that meaning will either come from the lexicon, in the case of the leaf nodes, or else be derived from it by its children according to a grammar rule. We start with the meaning of skateboards. Now rule NB tells us how to handle this non-branching structure. The non-branching structure matches the rule's syntactic template, and this tells us what to do meaning-wise. In the syntax, we have one more non-branching structure here. So we again use rule NB. Here, to reveal more of what's, it, what's happening, I unpack the meaning of skateboard into a lambda expression. So we're operating under the highly simplified assumption that the skateboarders are just Bart and Homer. Now we process the subject. We begin with Bart. Rule NB tells us to pass him up unmodified because we again match NB's template. Finally, we get to use a new rule, S. The matching is triggered by the S node branching to PN and VP. Notice that we cannot use rule Q2, which requires a QP as its left argument. On the meaning side, the rule says, apply the VP meaning to the NP meaning. So we do that. We can redu further reduce the term by substituting BART in for X, uh, and that takes us to the final value, which happens to be true. Let's do one more example. We'll again derive an S meaning, but now we'll use rule Q2 to do it. This example is more involved than the previous one. We start with every child skateboards in the syntax. We have to apply rule NB a bunch of times to process the non-branching nodes. Here I've done all those steps. The only noteworthy thing is that I also unpack the meaning of every, since we want to see how it functions as the primary piece of the composition. We first put together the determiner every with its restriction child. That's an application of Q1. 
Intuitively, what happens is that the meaning of child knocks out the lambda f in every and goes in for f in the body of that expression, which delivers the entire meaning of the subject every child. Finally, we use rule q2 to get the sentence meaning because we match its syntactic template. The subject meaning is the functor. It applies to the VP meaning skateboards, which knocks out the lambda g and goes in for the variable g in the body of the expression, which delivers the final meaning. Notice that this is just saying we have a value of t if the children, more precisely the characteristic set of the child function, is a subset of the skateboarders. So we've derived the final meaning, which corresponds to a claim about the world, as we would expect given our intuitions about the sentence we're analyzing.